here at the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to use some watercolor pencils and maybe some twinkling H2O's. I got some beading thread there. Huh? We're going to color a fairy because I had uh, somebody ask me how to use watercolor pencils with a blending pen. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. So let's go to the table and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, here we have um, our supplies. Um, I've stamped this fairy from um, Crafter's Companion and I bought these uh, stamp sets from customcrops.com and um, I will see if they still have them and I'll put a link below the video so you can check it out. And if you do check it out, please let them know that Lindsay sent you because uh, they were nice enough to share my YouTube channel on their website. Um, so I wanna repay the favor. Um, I'm using um, eight colors here. I've got this uh, light color, it's called um, Red Violet Lilac and um oh i'm sorry red violet, violet lake and i'm going to just go in on the skirt of this fairy and um, add some color i'm working on bristol which is a smooth um card and you can get it in big pads at the art supply store actually it comes in size 9 by 12 and higher and what i did was um i used a coupon i went to ac more and i bought a big pad of the 11 by by no, 14 by 17 size, and then I chopped it down. But that might be a bit um, difficult for some of you to uh, deal with, so you can get it in a smaller size. I'm gonna use this um, olive green. And what I did was I swatched all these out on the side and kind of blended them out with my blender pen so I could see how they were going to, um, how they were gonna blend and look once they were colored out, because sometimes it's deceiving. Because if you look at the end of that, um, of that, pencil and you look at the um, it colored on the white card it looks quite different so it's always a good idea to do that or you know sometimes if I if I um, stamp something it doesn't come out very good instead of throwing it away I'll use that just to kind of work out my color um, my colors and um, I did that too because this one didn't come out very good but I just kind of played with some colors on it just to just to get a feel for what I wanted to do and I'm leaving the centers of my areas white I'm not coloring them in because I want to um, I want to have it kind of fade to that lighter color and I'm going to use this um, dark violet which I swatched out there to color the little flowers um, on her waistband of her skirt. Now after it dries the nice thing is you can go back in with more color. Um, this is a smooth, a very smooth um, cardstock. When you buy Bristol it's basically it's a great paper because it's um, it's got some sizing in it and you can do light washes, you can use markers. It's really designed more for markers and illustration. So it's really good for your stamping. Um, I actually prefer this top press paper. For one, it's a lot cheaper and easier to find and um, it stamps really, really well. This is 90 pound paper, um, 260 GSM I believe um, is the equivalent. I think that's what it said on the on the pad, but it feels it feels thicker than like the 110 pound cardstock that I usually get. So just to give you an idea there. I want to overlap some of this um, uh, light violet lake color here, or red violet lake, just over that purple, because I think the purple's a little too blue on its own. Put that in there a little bit. I like to get a lot of my colors done before I start blending. Now for the skin tone, I'm gonna do this a little bit differently. I'm gonna use this, um, this uh, flesh pink here, and I'm going to color everything, all the skin. And then I'm going to add some shadows onto it because I feel like it just needs that little bit of um, buffer almost so that I don't overdo it with the other colors. And of course this is Caucasian skin. You'd want to approach it differently if you were painting any other um, ethnicity of skin. Um, and these illustrations are by Mary Cicely Barker and she is the, um, the illustrator of the Flower Fairies illustrations and Crafters Companion licensed her work a couple of years ago. Um, so as soon as I saw these available to buy, I bought them right up because I didn't want to risk missing them. I love, these are some of my favorite illustrations and I didn't want to miss a chance to get them. Um, this is Raw Umber number 56, which is down here on my swatch and I'm using this for um, shadows on the skin. <clears throat> hope I'm not going too fast. I just kind of, I'm not a very meticulous color. When I color, I just tend to like to scribble in the color and then blend it with my pen, my blender pen. So, you know, you don't have to be perfect about this. I'm just throwing in some shadows here just to give a little variance of skin tone. You can do some around the eyes where it would be darker. And then um, I'm actually going to go right into the hair with this color just to give it a nice, um, a nice seamless blend. And then for the rest of the hair, I've got this um, bright, brighter yellow. It's a uh, raw sienna. And I'm going to go in and put that in there. I have the set of 72. What I'm using here are Derwent um, 
watercolor pencils and they look different because if you if you buy a set now they're they actually have um, navy blue wooden barrels instead of the gray but they're the same pencils they, they have the hexagonal um, shapes so they don't roll off your table um, these are not the ink tents I find it hard to do skin tones with the ink tents so I grab these instead now I had these for many many years I'm gonna use a little of the um, burnt umber here for the shadows in the hair so really she's gonna have kind of some dirty blonde colored hair I didn't want to have it yellow yellow I wanted to have it a little bit more natural looking unlike mine <laughs> that is not very natural looking but I like it anyway there we go and then if I need to add any more brown I can always pick it up off the uh, tip of the pencil for the flowers here I'm going to go back in with that dark violet which is right there swatched out and I'm scribbling it in because I'm going to uh, I'm going to blend it out so I just need to I don't want to go outside of the lines too much but I just need to get a little in there and then I'll drag it around with the blender pen and I've got this olive green for the stem and I want to get it in there because this is um, lavender so it's got some little bits of you can still see some little bits of green up in the stem and now I think we're ready to blend so I've got my Stampin Up blender pen this is actually my favorite one um, they come in a three pack um, you do have to get them from the Stampin' Up! website or a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. But when I got these, and it was many years ago, I'm thinking it was probably about eight years ago, you get three in a pack and it was $10. So you could split them up with friends or just have them so you can have, you know, one in each of your little bags of, you know, I have on the go crafting bags, so I like to have one around. But I let my kids use these. Um, the tips are still nice and sharp. I did have to wash them out once after we did our Valentine's this year. The kids got them pretty clogged up because we were using watercolor crayons with them. But um, but they, you know, I rinsed them out, I added some glycerin to them, and they were as good as new again. I'm going to go in and do the hair. Just careful not to get into the purple of the uh, wings. Uh, so I really can't recommend these enough because I've tried other brands. Um, and they pill, like they start to wear down the ends fairly quickly and then they um, they don't blend very well and you can't get any detail because the tips wear down. So this is, a, this is a product I particularly like. I wish you could just walk into the store and buy it. Um, there are other brands out there and you might have some other brands. Now to clean it, what I'm going to do is grab my mistake piece and I'm just going to scribble it out. When my ink is clear, when my pen doesn't leave any more lines, then it's, um, it's all clean. I'm going to go into the skirt next and I'm just dragging around the color. There's nothing to it really. When people ask me um, what they recommend for a beginner to get for stamping, I usually recommend a waterproof uh, brown or black ink pad or both. Um, what I'm using is actually chocolate chip from Stampin' Up! That I don't know if it's still waterproof, but when I bought it, it was, and I bought the reinker at that time. So at that time it was, I'm not sure if it still is. But I recommend a, um, a waterproof black and brown ink pad and watercolor pencils because you can do so much with just that combination you know if you get stamps that can be colored like these flower fairy ones uh, you have a really great um, amount of options for very little outlay of cash and you know I have the Derwent pencils they're not the cheapest they're very good quality but you can find um, you know less expensive pencils that are still decent like the carrot aquarelle uh, pencils. They used to sell those at Staples. I'm not sure if they still have them anymore, but those are decent. Um, or maybe you just want to save up your money and get the get the Derwent so you know you only have to buy them once. But these are wonderful pencils. I'm going to go in here and get the little flowers on the waistband. If you use your brush more on its tip, straight up and down, you'll get more detail. And you could even, if you wanted to, you could go back in with a pencil and while it's a little bit damp, you can add a little bit more detail. It doesn't work as well on the smooth paper as it would on watercolor paper to do that. Otherwise, let it dry and then add more detail later after that. I'm just using my pen up here to pull the, um, to put the purple right into the details where I want it. I don't sharpen my pencils very much. I'd rather just kind of scribble it on and pull it around. Um, that way I, it conserves a lot of the lead. But I've had these for many years. I've had these since before I had kids and my oldest child is 12. So it tells you how long I've had these. And um, they're still going strong. I think as far as, um, as far as getting the most for your money, watercolor pencils will outlast your markers and um, many other color mediums just because you know they're not going to dry out on you as long as you don't drop them they're going to stay good for you um, so you know you can invest in a good set and know that it's going to last you a long time and I don't work for Derwent um, I just really like their products I wouldn't say no if they ask me to work for them I'll tell you that. 
And um, you know, really that's all there is to, to coloring that cute little fairy. Um, if you want to add a little sparkle, which I don't want to add too much because, and before you cap your marker off, just scribble it, make sure it's clean. Um, if you want to add a little sparkle to the wings, you can add some like, twinkling H2Os. So they come in these little pots like this, or you can use, you know, any sort of um, sparkly mica powder. And I'll use a regular brush because these uh, pigments, they're, they're thicker, they might clog my blending pens. So if I just take like a little um, paintbrush, I can go in and I can add just you know, little bits of sparkle. You want to spray the uh, Twinkling H2Os and let them, um, kind of let them soften up before you work with them. I'm just using this really pearlescent uh, white red color just to just to add a little sparkle and I can even go put a little bit in her skirt too. But I really want the uh, the color work that we've done to show through. And if you decided that you really wanted some more, um, some more color, some darker color, what you can do, and I probably do this with a with a wet paintbrush or a damp paintbrush rather than going in with my water with my blender pen because it will kind of clog up the blender pen. Um, you can take your damp brush and you can pick up color for right from the lead. And some people, some companies say not to do that, and I really can't imagine why because I've been doing it for years and I've never heard a pencil. But maybe there's certain brands that you shouldn't do that to. I don't know, but I'm just saying that I've done it with my ink tents. I've done it with my um, regular watercolor pencils, and I've never had a problem with it damaging any of them. So there you have it. I will use this um, image on a um, on a card. I'll obviously chop that off, and I'll post that on my blog in case you want to see it. My blog link is also below. Uh, you can subscribe over there if you want to, and you'll get a little email each day when I put a new project up. Um, so, you know, there's that if you want to do that, and then you'll see when I post this, I missed something in the green, so, you know, and if you don't have a blender pen, you can't, you know, get one, use a damp paintbrush, just uh, dampen your paintbrush with a little bit of water, maybe squeeze it with your fingers to take off the excess, and you know, that works really well too, so don't let your lack of resources limit your creativity, use what you have, make it work. The best artists in the world were not the richest. They weren't the ones that had the most supplies. They were the ones that used their noggin and made awesome stuff. So please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this video. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, happy crafting.